Hey guys, welcome to lesson two. And we are going to be proving trigonometric identities. And so your goal for these is just to get size to look like this side. So it might be like cotangent of x equals cotangent of x. It might end up being like 1 equals 1. Um, you just want to prove that they're identities. So that means that they're equal. So whatever um, steps you take to do that, um, as long as they're proving equal, that's okay. So um, everybody's answer might look a little bit different, and that's okay. So the first thing I want to do here, I think, is, I don't know, I think I'm going to multiply by the tangent of x. So what's nice on this side is tangent of x times cotangent of x, that's going to equal 1, and then I will have sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Well, this is the mama Pythagorean identity, which is equal to 1. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So 1, 1 equals 1. And so I have just proven that those two are equal to each other. Um, so see if you can do this one. I think it's best to just kind of try it on your own. And like I said, I might not think the same way you think, and that's okay. Um, but just kind of take a second to um, get your mind into this and see how you do. So the first thing I see on this problem is I, I saw that these are reciprocals on top of each other, so I wanted to see what would happen. So I pulled apart the fraction, and I end up with this. So this is the same thing as sine of x as well, and this is the same thing as cosine of x. So on this side, I'm going to have sine squared x and then plus cosine squared x is equal to secant squared x minus tangent squared x. Okay, so again, we have the mama Pythagorean theorem and one of the baby Pythagorean theorems, and um, this is a form of it. So really feel comfortable with moving those terms around and seeing that this is equal to 1, and the mom of the Pythagorean theorem is equal to 1, 2. So um, I've just proved that those two are equal to each other. Okay, go ahead and try this one, see what you can do. Okay, this is one that you very well could have something totally different than me. Um, so I just saw that um, 1 plus tangent squared theta or x, that's the same thing as secant squared x. That's one of those um, baby identities. And so um, that's kind of where I began. So I changed this into sine and cosine just to see what happened. Um, so that's where I went here. And then um, I saw that like I needed a common denominator to combine these. And so I ended up with sine squared x plus cosine squared x, one. And so even though this looks really yucky, I've proven that both sides are equal to each other. Okay, so let's try this one. Sorry, skip number four. Number four. Okay, so this one, again, um, my always, always my go-to is to break it down into sine and cosine. So that's where I kind of start. So um, here, if you're weak with fractions, this might come back to bite you. Um, in several of these problems, I've already dealt with fractions. So just feel comfortable with, like, you have to have a common denominator. So I bumped this up. I multiplied both the top and bottom by cosine of theta. So this became cosine squared theta over cosine. And then I could combine them here. And so that's what happened. Okay, so let's go down to number five. Okay, so the first thing I saw was that this is one of the baby Pythagorean theorems, and so um, it was tangent squared, and so again, I just pulled it apart. Um, so this is the top part of the fraction, this is the bottom part of the fraction, and I turned it into sine and cosine and ended up with this. Now try number six. Okay, so again, um, these are one of those Pythagorean identities. I think I said Pythagorean theorem last time, sorry. Um, Pythagorean identities. So this is equal to secant of x. This is equal to negative sine. Um, so secant squared x times negative sine squared x. So I simplified that um, and got it in terms of sine and cosine. And then I multiplied these together to get this. And then I knew that that sine over cosine is negative. Go ahead and try this one. 
So the first thing that's jumping out at me is that I'm going to find a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply these together, and that's my common denominator. So I just want to point that out first. Okay, so I knew that this was equal to negative tangent squared x, and um, so that's where this step is coming from. I just simplified the top two. And um, so I have my negative two here, and then one over tangent squared x is cotangent squared x. So that's where I got my final answer. Okay, guys, we have two more. Um, hopefully you're seeing kind of like the pattern of it. So um, I don't know. I find these really relaxing. I think they're like little puzzles. So I, I enjoy doing them. Um, again, I just want to remind you that just because I'm doing it one way doesn't mean that you can do it another way and be and not be correct. So as long as you're getting going through the process correctly and ending up with the same answer, then you're just going to be fine. Okay, so try number eight. Okay, so this is, um, to me, very similar to the other one. So this ends up being negative sine squared of x. And so this is where that's coming from. And here's my negative 2. And then 1 over sine squared x, that's going to be cosecant squared x. All right, guys, now we have two more. So um, why don't you try 9 and 10 on your own and see how you do. So this one I thought was really easy because I noticed the Pythagorean identity there, and that became 1 plus cotangent squared theta, which is also another Pythagorean identity. So um, that one went pretty quick. Okay, so this one has a lot going on, so I'm going to go ahead and stop and kind of show you my thought process here. So the first thing I did here is split this up into this minus this. So that's where this is coming from. And so there was a whole lot going on there. So I split that apart into this and this apart into that and then just kind of simplified. So I see that cosines cancel out. So this ends up being 1 over the sine squared theta. And then um, over here, it's in a propeller, um, those end up canceling out. So it's 1 over cosine squared theta. And then from here, this is cosecant squared, and this is secant squared theta. And so I just found the identity. And we are done. That's it.